Um, let's, uh, I guess, walk through some of the challenges that the industry has. Let's see what's happening over there. So, the world. yeah, one of the biggest things that we're facing in the industry or one of the biggest challenges is, of course, this uh, increasing amount of compute per rack. And most specifically, um, GPUs moving into the data center space. Um, technologies like AI and machine learning are accelerating that. Um, and of course, blockchain and crypto mining, which is a, a, another big trend outside of the, I guess, pure data center, but also how to run all this compute, um, which is distributed now, um, a big challenge, how to run AI infrastructure on the edge. Um, so the challenge of more density, uh, less latency, uh, distributed infrastructure, um, some of the biggest challenges that we're facing. Is understanding more density as too much compute in less space, let's say, no, for uh, attendees there are? Yes, absolutely. So essentially kilowatt per server U or kilowatt per node, um, where we're transitioning from, I guess, the medium uh, data center rack being in just uh, three, four, five, maybe six kilowatts per rack. Um, where now today there's some HPC deployments in the range of 60 kilowatts per rack. So how to accommodate that, uh, how to bring that into facilities that weren't originally designed for that type of capability. Um, but that's also tied into an environmental challenge, which is the um, amount of energy that's being consumed, crazy amounts of energy being consumed to run all this digital world that we live in. And for example, all the internet infrastructure consumes uh, the same amount of electricity than China and wow. emits the amount of CO2 um, between two to four times the amount of CO2 that the uh, that commercial air travel is um, uh, generating. So a big planetary challenge, I would say, from an environmental perspective that we truly need to figure out how we solve um, and how do we truly position data centers to be more sustainable. Um, and sustainability programs that leverage technologies that really do reduce um, these these um, consumptions. So we have technology challenges, but also planet challenges, let's say. Yes, and, and not just the electrical challenge, the water challenge. So okay. data centers consume large amounts of water. Um, usually a, a medium data center evaporates an Olympic swimming pool of water every two days. And that's because evaporative cooling is the type of technology that is usually used in the secondary cooling loops. Um, so how can we, what technologies are available to allow us to limit the amount of uh, water that's being consumed? And at the same time, that's going to allow us to uh, facilitate site selection because one of the biggest challenges that data centers are facing now is I need to make sure that the site I'm selecting is going to be able to supply this amount of water um, during its lifetime. And the water that's being used for data centers today is mostly drinking water. So another so, yeah. it's big alarming. Two Olympic swimming pools of drinking water, uh, sorry, an Olympic swimming pool of drinking water every two days. Um, more, this is more of a technical challenge, I guess, um, how to improve the efficiency of data centers. So um, the Uptime Institute, which is an organization that uh, provides certification for data centers, uh, at the same time also uh, supplies a report on power usage effectiveness. Power usage effectiveness is a measure that allows us to understand how much energy is required for cooling IT infrastructure in a data center. And their latest report, the 2020 report, uh, which was just released a few days ago actually, is showing that um, we're stalled since 2013. The efficiency in data center has not improved. Um, and at summer, we believe that the next level of efficiency is only possible through changing the actual medium uh, that is used in data centers. So. Air is for sure a limiting factor today. Um, so why immersion cooling? Um, well, everybody, we all understand we're coming from air cooling, air cooling environments, um, where these, I guess, the typical rack density, as I mentioned, is between four to eight kilowatts. That's what you tend to see. Um, again, if we're trying to break, uh, to achieve this 
new level of efficiency and at the same time try to uh, solve some of the planetary challenges and environmental challenges that data centers are causing in the industry, um, there's some liquid cooling technologies that are already available, already being adopted at scale, um, most specifically liquid direct to the chip cooling and also immersion cooling. It's a nice, like a difficult balance to have between which are your uh, resources we use uh, while we respect the planet, yeah, and we also achieve like enough densi densities for, for the high technologies that we need to use every day. Absolutely, and not, not only that, we need to make sure that, um, that from a TCO perspective, whatever technology we implement is going to make sense, because if not, if it's going to cost more than what we're implementing today, it's impossible that it's going to be adopted, right? So, um, direct to the chip cooling is a technology that obviously pushes water directly through the um, hot components in a server. Um, it, it has its challenges. Um, I think the image is very descriptive of some of the challenges that it has, a substantial amount of pipe work and uh, risk of leaks and those leaks being a conductive liquid like water. Um, but the rack densities can be increased. Uh, the cost is not too far off compared to um, air cooling environments and it has also quite a few benefits uh, of course around uh, energy capture and energy reuse, etc. Um, immersion cooling, which is the space where uh, Summer operates in, is a bit of a different approach. We completely submerge the IT equipment into uh, a dielectric fluid that we've developed. Um, and that liquid just changes the medium that's around the servers. And it captures the heat, it transports the heat in a very efficient way. It protects the IT hardware as um, and uh, overall, it allowed us to slash the energy costs, increase the density, um, and it brings some other side benefits, like if I deploy immersion systems in the edge, I have this protective barrier around the hardware, which is um, also uh, very beneficial in harsh environments. And how uh, specifically immersion cooling works? Well, so immersion cooling is, um, uh, it's changing the medium, as I mentioned. So essentially using, instead of air, using a liquid, which is um, non-conductive, capturing the heat from the IT equipment and transferring that heat to a water loop, uh, which is taking the energy outside of the building or um, allowing for energy reuse. Um, because it operates at very high temperatures, meaning uh, an immersion system will typically run at between 50 and 60 degrees centigrade. It means that the water loop temperatures are also in a similar range. And that, at the end of the day, uh, it, it we'll, we'll see it now, I think, in a slide that I'm going to show. Um, it means we can use dry cooling infrastructure uh, in the uh, exterior of our data centers instead of chillers and compressors and evaporative type of cooling systems. Um, so essentially the, f the energy footprint per kilowatt is a fraction uh, from that 1.6 that's being reported um, by the Uptime Institute down to 1.03. Again, why immersion cooling? Of course, there's a big market. Uh, it's accelerating. Um, not only all the efficiency and density that I was describing, but also there's a true market behind it. Uh, the growth is very aligned with the data center construction growth as well. Um, but also very exciting to see that there's 29 million devices that are going to be connected to the global network uh, by 2022, and half of those are um, going to be deployed at the edge. And so for us, the edge uh, and leveraging immersion cooling at the edge is super strategic. How does it work? Um, as we were mentioning, it's, uh, th there's a water loop connected to the immersion tanks. Uh, the tanks transfer the heat. The CDU technology, um, cooling distribution unit technology, captures the heat from the IT equipment, it transfers it to the water loop, um, and that water loop runs either outside or we have a heat exchanger in between to where we can uh, activate energy reuse. Mm -hmm. But the whole idea is that it's a very simple installation, uh, a redundant pumping system for the water loop like any data center has today. And the um, outdoor coolers or, or, or uh, uh, evaporative coolers, chillers, etc., cetera, um, if they're replaced with dry coolers, that's where we gain the biggest efficiency. And you can see from 
this slide that most of the temperatures or the temperature range at which we operate, and this is a very conservative temperature range, um, allows us to run the dry cooling infrastructure mm. um, anywhere on the globe uh, without these, without having to chill the water. Okay, uh, and when is the immersion cooling the, the smart choice, let's say? Well, r resume in, um, if, if you have any of the challenges that you can see here, and I think there's not a single data center out there that doesn't have them, um, immersion cooling is oh, an option, a future-proof option, uh, which is available today uh, with the technology that Summer brings to the market. Um, and of course, we'll also be talking about some of the innovation uh, that Summer is uh, going to bring in the very near future. We have some very exciting announcements this year. Summer, data centers that make sense.